VLOOKUP has been around for a while, but XLOOKUP is set to be the successor to VLOOKUP. And VLOOKUP is the third most used function in all of Excel, so it is a big deal. Let's look at what XLOOKUP can do, and let's look at what VLOOKUP can do as well. XLOOKUP is only available for Office 365 customers, but I'm gonna show you in this video why XLOOKUP is usually better and in some cases, why I still use VLOOKUP. And if you don't have Office 365, that's totally fine because I'm going to explain the concept of both of them and you can follow along. My name is David Benheim and I have plenty of videos on Excel, PowerPoint, Word, Power BI, Zoom, Teams. So feel free to subscribe to my channel if you want more videos like this. Here I'm going to write a function is going to return what the shoe sales are of these salespeople. Now I could, if I wanted to write equals and then go to Jen is 600 and manually look it up. Joe is over here, 300, but that is going to lead to some errors. In fact, if this changes to, for example, Harvey, then it is giving me the wrong number. And it's good practice in Excel to always have one formula that you can drag down the column. And in this case, it just won't work that way if you use this method. So that is where a lookup comes in. So with XLOOKUP, you can write equals XL and then tab, and then you get this that pops up. Now this is a thing to help you through a function. Always edit the one that's in bold. The ones that in, are in square brackets are optional. So in this case, we only have to edit the first three. The last three are optional. We will look at some of those later on though. So lookup value is going to be gen, comma, and then my lookup array is the column where gen is, the salesperson column. I'm gonna press F4 to lock in those cells. I'll show you what happens if you don't later on. And then comma return array is now in bold, so I'm going to return the shoe sales, which is in this column. Press F4 again, and then the others are optional, so I'm gonna close my brackets there, and I get 600, which is what we've identified before and I can drag it down to give me the rest of the answers. Now, with VLOOKUP, that is so much more difficult. With VLOOKUP, you start with the lookup value as with before, and then you press a comma. You want to look at the table array. So instead of an XLOOKUP where you specify the lookup column and the return column, with VLOOKUP, you have to specify the table and then which column number to do it. So if we wanted to calculate the profit, here I have a blank column F, but then I have sales and profit. I can just press that F4, my column index number there is three, and then press zero to make that an, an exact match. And that will give me that Jen has 500. However, in this case, what I want to do is I want to actually drag this and start my column to be able to look up shoe sales. However, the laws of VLOOKUP say that it has to start from the column with the lookup value. So in this case, it would just give me an error because there is not the word gen in the shoe sales column. With a VLOOKUP, this was impossible. So one workaround would be to effectively link those cells there. And then here, I could specify to look up from this until there. And then instead of three, I would do four. Then it would give me the right answer. But then I have to do this lookup column. We can drag down the formula there. But the real reason why people really like this is because it's more robust. So if I insert a new column there, look at what happens to my VLOOKUP values. They clear because it was specifying column number four, but column number four has now become one, two, three, four, five. So column number four is not actually correct anymore. Whereas if I insert something here, then it doesn't matter because a XLOOKUP just looks at the column and the return column. So it doesn't matter if they move or if they change. In fact, if I cut and paste this column there, 
it is now giving me completely different answers for VLOOKUP, but for XLOOKUP it hasn't broken. So that is one of the reasons why people really, really like this function. Now, there were ways to get around these two very important things in the old days using index and match. So index and match are two functions that when combined do what an X lookup does, but individually they're a little bit complicated, so it's difficult to write. Now I did say that there are some instances where I do still prefer using a VLOOKUP to an XLOOKUP. And that is when I want a very, very quick answer. So let me clear these here. Equals XLOOKUP and then here, comma, here, F4, comma, here, F4, close brackets. That's XLOOKUP. But a VLOOKUP equals VLOOKUP, lookup value, comma, and then I just specify this once, F4, comma, 3, comma, 0. So I just need to specify it fewer times, and they do give me the, the same answers. To caveat that, if I want something that's robust, then I will always use an XLOOKUP. An XLOOKUP means that you can rearrange data and do a whole load of other things, and it can look in all different directions. However, if you just want a one-off quick lookup, then I will write it with VLOOKUP because it is just faster to type. But let's look at Patrick here and we can see that the profit for Patrick is minus 100 there, but here it's minus 20. But here in this answers, we are looking at minus 100 in this column and minus 100 in the other one. But what about minus 20? So you can, if you want to, with an XLOOKUP specify in the last input, comma, comma, and then search last to first, minus one. You can, if you want to, make that start the other way, and then it will look up 20, but that's not great because it only works for two instances. And firstly, uh, it's hard to know which one you want to choose. So what I do is I always make sure I have unique values in my lookup table. I select them, I go to conditional formatting, highlight cell rules, and duplicate values. And then I just press duplicates. I can choose a yellow color, for example, press OK. And as long as they are duplicated, they will pop up in a color. But if they change even a little bit, like with an S, both of them will go back to usual. So that's something I typically do in this instance. Now here I have another XLOOKUP and it is returning the profit column from the city. And if I want to drag this down, I am fine till there. But if I go to the next one, I get Seattle being an error. Now Seattle is an error because it is actually showing me that Seattle is not in the original picture. But maybe we just have a new store in Seattle and we don't want that to give us an error. And certainly we don't want our total column to give us an error. So that is why the fourth input of XLOOKUP is the if not found function. So if I press comma zero, remember square brackets is optional, then it will do absolutely nothing different until it gets to an error where it replaces it with zero. Of course, if your error is from a misspelling like here for Detroit, then do not use that approach because it will just give you the wrong thing. In fact, when I work with VLOOKUPs or XLOOKUPs, I tend to go to uh, my column of my main data table and I go to the data tab, choose data validation and choose that I want a list with a source from my lookup table. Your lookup table should always be unique as I showed you before, and that means it's a drop down, which means that people cannot type in a misspelling even if they try like that. So it's generally better to allow people to not type a misspelled error. And if you fix a misspelling with an X lookup with a value, if not found, then you are going to cause an actual problem with your data. Finally, let's look at what happens if you don't use F4. So if you do equals X lookup, also the same with VLOOKUP of city, comma, in the lookup array there, 
comma, then return, say, shoe sales, like that. Close my brackets, 600, that is correct. But then if I drag down, I get all these other errors. If I go to my formulas tab, I can go show formulas. There's a toggle on off that shows you the formula or the output. And I can see that if I scroll down, I can see that my blue cell is moving down, but also my other stuff is moving down. But really, I don't want my lookup column and return column to move. I only want the blue one to move. That is different to if I do that and I see that my columns are staying the same. So you do need to use an F4 that is both with a VLOOKUP and with an XLOOKUP. The other thing that an XLOOKUP does is it allows you to look up horizontally. So here I can say equals XLOOKUP of my lookup value is going to be um, dresses sales comma and then I'm going to look up my header row up here F4 comma return array for Chicago is going to be here F4 comma and then I can do my value if not found etc but I'm just going to close that up and give me those answers with a VLOOKUP you can do that you had to swap your VLOOKUP for an H lookup but essentially with an X lookup you can do it in both ways. I think it's called X because when you have X, you are actually looking in both directions, horizontally and vertically. Certainly if you flip around the X, you get a plus, which looks in both directions. So yeah, that is why I think you've got it there. Great, so that is my take on VLOOKUP versus XLOOKUP, why I usually use an XLOOKUP, but if I want something really, really fast, um, that's not robust, I will use a VLOOKUP just because it is nicer and easier and faster to write. If you like this video, then please consider hitting the subscribe button because I have tons of other content on PowerPoint, Excel, Power BI, Google Sheets, Zoom, Teams, etc. Thanks for watching.